Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Certainly time for another vlog, I think. I'll be heading out to BlizzCon soon, so every time I do an event, I like to talk a little bit about the channel. It's also mostly to remind people, hey guys, I'm not dead and I'm not deliberately ignoring you. I'm just kind of busy because I've got an event to deal with. So that's something to consider there. But regardless, I am heading out to BlizzCon pretty much right now as this video goes up. That's when Blizzard decided to fly me out a little bit early for some reason. Not sure why, but there's not much we can really do about that. And I should be back on the 10th in the evening. So I'll be gone most of the week. The usual caveat applies when I'm at an event. I cannot guarantee content because I don't know what will happen. I don't really have a massive work schedule while I'm there because I'm there to cast the Hearthstone tournament, which is not that long. It's only an eight-man invitational, so I really only anticipate that taking half a day. The rest of the time, I will be trying my best to have a look at Heroes of the Storm. That's something that I know a lot of you have expressed interest in, formerly known as Blizzard All-Stars or Blizzard Dota. I do have an interview with the lead designer of the game, that being Dustin Browder of StarCraft II fame, so I've got that nailed down, but Blizzard are pretty tight when it comes to giving direct feed or anything like that. It's very unlikely that they'll let me do that. If they do, incredible. If not, sorry. But I'll try and get some B-reel and maybe give you some impressions, because I know I'll be able to play it, so... That's a little bit of content that can kind of come out there, and I try to do content patch while I'm out there as well, but again, it's difficult to do. Sometimes the recording environments are just so dreadful, the internet connections in hotels are highly unreliable, and my laptop is a piece of crap and barely works. So yeah, that's not exactly ideal. Since I'm out there for a good few days, I may try and get down to LA for a day so that I can maybe do some stuff with Jesse and Brooke, but I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to pull that off can't promise anything. It's a good hour drive down to LA from Anaheim and it really depends who I can get a ride from or if I can get a car to go that far. I, I don't even know. So I'll see what I can do. There's supposed to be a podcast this week. I won't host it, but I may see if we can do a second shorter show in a, maybe a studio environment live like we did the last time I was in LA. But again, can't guarantee it. Sorry guys, sometimes I have to go to events and some people might ask, well, you know, why do you go to these? I went to the Escapist Expo for a few days and and some people question my decision to go there. And here's the thing, right, about going to these events. They help unlock interesting possibilities for the future. Showing your face at an event is kind of important. I know that when you, say, look at this channel, you see videos go up and you assume, all right, well, he makes videos every day, and that's his job. Yeah, and you're right, it is. But there's a little bit more to it than that when you're looking to build a long-term business because you have to build contacts and you have to also get your face out there. You've got to be recognized as a professional. The ability to present a live show is a very valuable commodity and it's something that could really help my career in the future. If YouTube goes bust tomorrow, then having public speaking skills, having a lot of experience when it comes to presenting high-profile events... That's a very useful talent to have. That's the kind of thing that would get you employed elsewhere. And more to the point, it gets access to really cool people. The only reason we had Jim Sterling on the co-optional podcast was because I met him and talked to him at the Escapist Expo. The only reason there's a bunch of videos of myself and Yahtzee out there now is because I met them at the Escapist Expo and I got to do some panels with them. So there's videos of that. I met all sorts of cool people. Hell, the Co-Optional Podcast now has theme music because I met Miracle of Sound at the Escapist Expo. So every time you go to these places, you can make contacts which can allow you to make better content in the future, which in turn benefits you guys. So that's why I go to events. I try to moderate them. I get offered a lot more events than I actually take. Let me put it that way. Because I can't be away from home all the time. I hate flying at the best of times. But obviously it would kill the channel if I did that. So I try to keep it in moderation. November's going to be a very busy month because I have a second event towards the end of the month. Thankfully that I won't be there for too long. It'll only be a few days. But I've also, of course, got the November releases. And that brings me on to the idea of the next-gen consoles and just how much coverage there will be of that. I will not provide direct feed gameplay from the consoles. Uh, the reason is, of course, because I'm a PC channel. For the longest time, I have maintained that I'm a PC-centric channel. 
Doesn't mean that I only do PC, but it does mean that when I do stuff like WTF is and direct feed gameplay that I capture, it's from a PC only. And it's always going to be from a PC perspective. When I'm doing news, yeah, okay, I'll talk about consoles because at the end of the day, the console space and how well it's doing and what it's doing is relevant to the PC because we get a lot of ports from console. So it's important to keep up with that. Plus, there's not enough PC news to really do a daily show anyway. Let's be frank. Uh, there's not enough going on in the space to justify that. But for direct feed capture, no. I would love to talk about stuff like the Xbox One and the PS4 controller. I actually have a PS4 controller right here. It's plugged into my PC, but I've had a number of problems with it so far. So I can't really talk too much about how good that actually is for a PC user. But once I get the Xbox One controller, I'll of course be using that with the PC and I'll see whether or not it's better than the 360 pad. And I'll do stuff that's kind of relevant then. I'll continue to talk about my experiences with the machines, but I won't be doing anything like WTF is of PS4 or Xbox One titles. I will own both of them, however, so I will be able to talk about them in fairly great detail on the podcast. Podcast is always the place to go if you want to hear me talk about console games, because I do play them. I especially play an awful lot of games on, say, the 3DS or the Vita when I get the chance. So I will talk about things like Dead Rising 3 and Killzone, but I just won't do it here. So I'll try and keep you posted as to whether or not I actually talk about that stuff. Maybe I can do you a little update on content patch to say, hey guys, I did the podcast this week and I actually did talk about Killzone and actually playing it. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that, then by all means. In answer to the frequent question, why don't I do console games? I feel that it's better to be dominant in a niche than it is to potentially expand your audience at the expense of giving up your kind of king of the hill status. When it comes down to dealing with PC, there aren't all that many channels that do it, and there are even less that do it to this kind of size, yeah? There's really me and Nerd Cubed, and that's kind of it when it comes to PC-focused coverage. There's a couple of channels that may be focus on an awful lot of FPS gameplay. Like, you can look at stuff like Level Cap, for instance. You know, he's of a decent size as well, but he'll focus mostly on FPS. There's Frankie on PC in 1080p, again, focuses on FPS. But myself and Dan are really the only ones that do it to this scale and really focus on PC. And I think that's a really important niche to hold. And I think that giving that up makes little sense because I see the PC market continuing to grow. And as a result, I see myself in this for the long haul. That's my business strategy. I have done a little bit of console feed in the past, mostly just at the behest of a company that's asked me to do it. It's like, hey, will you take a look at our game and do a stream or whatever? But that's not the kind of thing that I would really do on my YouTube channel anymore. I feel honestly that putting stuff like the Final Fantasy 13 2 footage up was a mistake and that's something I learned from and I generally don't post stream VODs to YouTube as a result but if say I had any reason to stream a console game yeah sure I might do that uh, but I probably wouldn't do it on YouTube I'd do it on my Twitch channel where kind of anything goes when it comes to trashy gameplay speaking of trashy gameplay the Doom video certainly went down well some people said to me isn't that a let's play it's like, I don't think so I don't really feel that it fulfills the definition. The thing about Let's Play is the term has been really diluted and it doesn't really mean anything anymore. It can basically just mean this guy is talking over gameplay, ergo that's a Let's Play. And I don't think that's necessarily true. I've talked about this an awful lot, but I feel the Doom video was made to showcase a mod. If I'd said WTF is Brutal Doom, you guys would have been none the wiser. <laughs> it's pretty much the same idea, right? It's looking at the game and in this case, it was a mod that I enjoyed and I wanted to share it with people and show them what was going on with it. And every now and again, I will do that. And I don't feel that putting it in the WTF is series is a good idea because I've always said I don't WTF is old games. Why don't I do that? Because there's so many new ones that I don't get the chance to cover. Why would I do an old one, right? So I like to keep that series current and I like to focus on games that are coming out on Steam around that kind of time so that people know that there's going to be something of a buyer's guide there. And man, I get about 10 times as many games as I can actually cover on my own. If I were to start a series for mods or anything like that, in addition to the fact that I already do about eight series as it is, I'd feel pressured to do a lot of mod stuff and I'd have people very disappointed if I didn't and then I wouldn't be able to keep up with it and it would come at the expense of something else like WTF is. So... It's, it's cool every now and again to do some little spotlight on something I really like, like the Doom mod. Or maybe just out of nowhere say, hey, I've been playing Deus Ex again for a while. Here's a level of Deus Ex while I talk about how brilliant Deus Ex is. And every now and again, I'll do that. But I don't think it needs to be a series. Like every time I come up with a concept like that, everyone always says, oh, you should do a series like that. No, it, it, it kind of kills the moment and it kills the magic as well. 
those are the videos that I'm really inspired to do and I'm really passionate about it. And often the videos that are highly successful as a result, that they don't need to be a series. They need to be a spur of the moment kind of thing. They need to be something that in that very moment, I think I have got to make this video. I have got to get this commentary down. I've got to share it with people because I'm really excited. And that excitement disappears, of course, when you turn it into a series because there's an expectation. And that's an expectation you can often not fulfill. But anyway, I don't expect any of you to actually care about my definition of Let's Play or whatever, but it does get a little annoying, of course, to read comments that says, Hey, you said you didn't do Let's Plays, but I think this is a Let's Play. It ultimately doesn't matter what you think is a Let's Play, it matters what I think is a Let's Play. And I have a very specific definition. Uh, if you do multiple episodes of something, and it's a single-player game, and basically you're talking over someone else's work, that to me is a Let's Play. If there's 30 episodes of me playing Bioshock Infinite and talking, that's a Let's Play. Terraria is pretty much a let's play, but it's so bad that I wouldn't even consider it that. It's just a, it's a dumb talk show. And when it comes down to things like Hearthstone, I've said it time and again, the objection that I have to let's play is not the idea of doing it. It's the fact that a lot of people exploit someone else's work and just babble over it for lazy, easy money. And I hate that. Yeah, and I don't want to do that. I want to provide something that actually puts the game front and center. And that's what something like WTF is allows me to do. And if a game has no story and pretty much the only story is created by me, I'm okay with making videos of that because it's not like I'm exploiting someone else's work. I'm the one doing the work. It's just the difference between what I feel is kind of like an, an honest video and something that's just riding on the coattails of a team of people that are infinitely more talented than you'll ever be. I have no doubt in a month I'll say the same bloody thing again. I'm very repetitive when it comes to that topic. Can I talk about Ender's Game for a second? Yeah, you know, I'm going to do that. And you're going to like it, damn it. That's how it's going to be. So I went to see the Ender's Game movie, and I'll keep this spoiler free for you, so don't worry about it if you haven't seen Ender's Game. Of course, you know the plot if you've read the book, but if you haven't seen the movie or read the book, then I'll keep this spoiler free. And I went into it not expecting that much because when I eventually read Ender's Game, which was actually only a few months ago, I know, you, some of you'll be like, what? Why didn't you read Ender's Game before that? It never really crossed my mind. I read it cover to cover in about a day. I just blitzed it and I was completely engrossed and I felt like it was a really good read and one of the best sci-fi I've ever read. Then I went to see the movie and when I go to see movies or books, I want to see certain scenes played out on screen because I want to see how much it matches up with what was in my imagination. And a lot of it did. You know? The zero-G battle scenes and things like that, very much so. They definitely gave me the vibe that I was expecting. And some of the characters are quite nicely done. But there are some changes to the story that I really didn't enjoy. And honestly, it seems like that doesn't translate well to the film medium. It was an action movie. It really was. There's a lot of non-action in the book. There's a lot of talking. There's some political stuff. There's some interesting side plots with the brother and sister. But none of that's included in the movie. It really just focuses on Ender. The biggest problem that I had beyond anything, though, was the way that they simply did not accurately show the destruction of the child. Yeah, Because that's really what happens within the book. You see a child worn down. You see a human being worn down and just pushed to the absolute breaking point, and you never see that. You just do not see it at all within the movie. Always so fresh-faced, always enthusiastic. He really doesn't seem like what you would expect having read the book. So I was... I was pretty disappointed by that, honestly. It's okay. I mean, visually, it was stunning. It's got some of the best battle scenes I've ever seen. Some of the visuals just blew my mind. But as a movie, it was not that great. I'm sorry. It isn't. There's not much I can really say about it without actually spoiling the rest. So, yeah, there you go. That's my little spoiler-free impression, I suppose, of Ender's Game. Not that positive. Will I be covering Call of Duty? Yep. Yep, absolutely. I do it every year. It's it's kind of a ritual of mine. Last year, I actually said I'd do zombies, and I never did. This year, I will try and do Extinction Mode. I usually do a single-player video where it's basically, has the single-player changed and got good? Answer is usually no, and then I move on. And then I'll do a multiplayer video once I've leveled the character up a little bit, and I'll try and do an Extinction video as well. I know, most of you are saying, why would you need to do that? Why would you need to? I, 
it's it's one of the most important franchises in gaming. You cannot ignore that. You might not like it, and there's a lot of it that I don't like either, but you have to keep an eye on it. And what could be absolutely fantastic is if they actually do innovate in some way that's interesting. I don't think Infinity Ward actually will. I really feel that that's more of Treyarch's area because they like to throw caution to the wind. And when I played the Black Ops 2 campaign, I actually noticed some parts of it that I liked. A lot of very scripted events and extremely linear stuff going on there, but occasionally they did have some divergence. They gave some choices, some subtle, some not so subtle, and they broke up some of the monotony with some sort of weird strategic missions and things like that. Maybe we will see that within Ghosts, but I find it highly unlikely. Plus, lots of people are going to end up buying it, so they need to know whether or not the bloody thing runs properly, and that's what a lot of these videos are all about. They will tell you whether or not it's actually a decent PC port. Aside from all that, though, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the people that have uh, come and subscribed lately. As you've seen, the channel has got a significant bump from the Gary's Incident incident. We're waiting for the numbers to come in from that video. Generally, payments from YouTube take about two months to come through, by the way. So once we've got the payments from that video, we'll be able to give what looks like a fairly substantial donation to the EFF. So that's great. You guys really helped make that happen. So thank you for that but we've seen an influx numbers are up across the board which is great i'm really happy with that we're seeing content patches spiking over 100,000 views on a regular basis which is fairly rare and of course wtf is, is doing incredibly well right now that seems to be the series that a lot of people have really got interested in so we'll keep doing that I mean, you know that format's never going to go away that's pretty much an infinite format that i'll do till the end of time so you can expect more of that but welcome to all the new viewers hopefully you enjoy the content all right, folks, there you go. So I'm off to BlizzCon, and hopefully I'll get to see a few of you while you are there. Please do approach. Please do say hi. I've said it time and again. I know people think I'm scary in real life. I'm really not. As long as I'm not visibly working, feel free to come on up and say hi. I'd like to meet as many of you as possible. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time.